puta, eh. Veo. Ahora sí me la tiré. There's no doubt that everybody who rides the Tour de France wants to wear the leader's yellow jersey, even if it's only for one day. And the sponsors of the team, too, demand this from the team because they want the publicity. Take this last week, for example. Eric Mackler of Switzerland has been leading for the Italian Carrera team. But he, they say, is not the rider who can win the Tour. And yet the team has spent an enormous amount of energy keeping him in yellow. And at the same time, Stephen Roach, the rider they believe can win the Tour, has had to defend when he should really be thinking of saving energy for the mountains of the Pyrenees and the Alps. It's quite true to say that the pressures on the individual rider are enormous, and some of them, you know, simply can't take it. Eric Mackler is the first Swiss rider to wear the leader's yellow jersey since 1953, and he intends to keep it for as long as possible. But this may be bad news for Ireland Stephen Roach, who finds his Carrera team committed to help a man who, in the end, hasn't the all-round ability to win. How to dislodge Mackler is the question of the day, and plans are made. It's time for Frenchman Charlie Motte, the Tour's dark horse, to come out into the sun. There's also Laurent Fignon, twice a winner, but he's still searching for those halcyon days. Right now, appearances are more important. And there's Andy Hampston, still seen as the next American winner of the Tour. The thought of the yellow jersey haunts him daily, but it doesn't always show. But on this warm morning, the Tour de France is about to deliver yet another surprise in this intriguing game of bluff. And Mexican Raul Alcala aims to become the name on everyone's lips. And that's because today's stage between Strasbourg and Epinel of 106 miles is mountainous for the first time, and Alcala is a climbing specialist. He joined the American 7-Eleven team last year, and he's the only Mexican rider ever to ride the Tour de France. It hasn't taken him long to become infected with Tour fever. The only cure is a yellow jersey. survivors of this two and a half thousand miles marathon are in point mood this morning as they set off due west towards Epinal. After a week in Germany, the tour has come home. So far, no Frenchman has won a stage or even led the race. So once out of town, the pressure was applied. This was not going to be just another day in the Tour de France. After the start, the attack started, and the gap began to open. Only a few miles out of Strasbourg, and already the day's pattern was taking shape. And it would be quite a day in the life of Mexican Raul Alcala. Andy Hampton, back in the pack, was happy enough as his teammate from Mexico went off in search of regaining time he'd lost so far. Eric Mackler would need more than just water to keep him cool this day. The ten-men breakaway was heading for the slopes of the Vosges Mountains, and the early attack had surprised the slumbering main field. They would pay heavily for their error. Only 20 miles out, and the group is already 58 seconds in front. And encouraged by the early game, the breakaway works well together. But behind for some, there are more important things to worry about, like just keeping up with the pack. Christophe Levan is in the break. He's only 3 minutes 29 seconds behind the yellow jersey. Alcala is next best place. He's 5 minutes 57 seconds back. It's too early for the man to think of victory. It's just time to keep cool. It's not unusual for the race to be under attack so soon, but there's plenty of time yet to straighten things out. 
Alpha wasn't up front to waste energy. He had no intention of losing the advantage the leaders had worked hard for. He's a climber, and the gentle hills of the Vosges suited his style. Behind, Alpha's 711 team has moved to the front and sift off the van's system new squad. The strategy was to discourage the pursuit and give the leaders as much time as possible to gain it. Conducting the Tour de France is not always easy, especially when no one is sure now who is calling the tune. Certain now that the attack is a serious attempt to take back the yellow jersey, the Carrera team take up the chase, but no one else is willing to help. That's the penalty when you lead the Tour. Trapped in the field, Mackler has more than just thinking to do now. This is Alcala's second Tour de France, and he's on the 7-11 team to help Andy Hampstead win the race. This is no double cross. It's better to have two men near the top than one. The bunch is mostly together as they approach the top of the first climb. But some were in desperate trouble at the back. Far behind the pack, two riders from the newest of the 23 teams in this year's race, Graham Jones and Paul Watson, part of the first ever British team at the Tour de France. And on their very first climb, the British riders suffering 15 minutes behind the pack. This was a controversial journey for the British because many in England believed the British team for the Tour had been assembled in haste. But the British were determined to be here this year to commemorate the 20th anniversary of Tom Simpson's death. The great British cyclist died in the Alps during the 67 Tour. Even a friendly push wouldn't help Watson and Jones make it to next Sunday's memorial service on Mont Ventoux. They would become two more victims of the Tour de France. So on the Tour de France's first full day on home soil, it's a Mexican, Raul Alcala, who is giving everyone food for thought. Riding like a veteran of many tours, the normally always smiling Alcala is in serious mood as he fuels up for the crucial miles that still lie ahead. His main rival for the leader's yellow jersey is young Frenchman Christophe Leven, forced to become a professional early because his parents couldn't afford to keep him at home. The biggest fear of poor riders is to become hungry and see all the efforts wasted. Table manners have no place here. become the greatest chase since the tour began, or perhaps it should be called the greatest escape. The gap is now 5 minutes 34 seconds. This breakaway has never faltered, and after a steady start, the escape has developed into a battle between a Frenchman and a Mexican, and both want the yellow property of the Swiss rider Eric Mackler. Now the alarm bells are ringing loudly and the Carrera team are brought to the front to try and save the day. With no friends in the pack, the team begin to work hard to repair the damage. The son of an auto mechanic, Alcalo was discovered in a local Mexican race and he was imported to America to become a professional cyclist. The Carrera team continues to pull together and Mackler himself is going to have to help if the yellow jersey is to hang on his bedpost tonight. Only Stephen Roach, the team leader, is not helping in pursuit. The gap is now 7 minutes 59 seconds. With such a lead, Leven is the new leader on the road because he started the day only 3 minutes 29 seconds behind. Alcala is the next best place. If he could slip Leven, he could lead the race. It's been a good day too for Andy Hampston because he's drafted along in the bunch while the Carrera team has been forced to waste energy chasing down Hampston's teammates. Roach doesn't seem too worried, but it may be Laurent Fignon, another possible tour winner who will be having the last lap. He knows it's Roach's teammates who are having to chase down one of his men up front. So 
this has become a nightmare day for the Carrera team. They feel the full responsibility of leading the race. And as time ticks away, the yellow jersey begins to look fallible. You have to wonder now why one team spends so much energy trying to keep the lead when it could cost Roach the race later. The final cards in this game have not yet been played. We'll be back. And so as the Tour de France snaked its way towards Epinal, the Carrera team had at last begun to close in. And this was the signal for Christophe Leven to go ahead of the leading group and bid for the yellow jersey. This was Raoul Alcala's only mistake of the day. He should have marked Levan, then he wouldn't have had to chase so late. After a day of working together to beat the rest, two men now become bitter rivals. And the best boot in this year's Tour de France is on. Levan, 23 years old and never a stage winner nor holder of the Golden Fleece, is told his advantage over Alcala and the field. It's 47 seconds with the pack closing at 4.20. Alcala is also worried about the pursuit behind. He's in no man's land and needs all the encouragement he can get now from his team car. Alcala must now show the resistance over these final miles that makes the difference between the good and the great. But with the experience of three tours, Leven is also coached by Cyril Guimard, the best manager. Advantage Leven. The Carrera team are still all alone in pursuit. The lead is crumbling, but at what cost in the days to come? Mappa is now within seconds of saving his yellow jersey, when earlier the loss seemed inevitable. The tour was at its most angry now. But on the first day of the tour, on home ground, a Frenchman was fighting for the yellow jersey. What could be better? This was certainly Leven's finest moment. Alcala continues to chase. The Mexican star was shining brightly. He was still set to finish second. But the Carrera team had closed the gaps. And neither Alcala nor Leven will be in yellow tonight. The Italian team had won the day, but what a pursuit. Then on the narrow roads approaching the finish, the field crashed. The followers were paying the price for not helping the Carreras. Even Andy Hampston was down, but unhurt. The delay, however, helped Leven keep up his escape, and Alcala kept his lead for second place. Hampston fell into a ditch and wrecked his bike and had to look to his nearest teammate, who happened to be Davis Finney. He took Finney's bike, leaving him to take a wheel and rejoin later. Teamwork takes strange turns in the tour. And now it's Finney's job to catch up, if he can. Hampston safely ahead. Finney's left to pick up the pieces. At the finish, there's a great cheer for Christophe Leven, who wins his first ever stage of the Tour de France. Behind the Carrera team still head at the reassembled pack. They're heading for home now. The team has saved the day for the man in yellow. Alcala never caught Leven, but he showed the tenacity of a great fighter by staying ahead of the rest for second place. It's a performance that will prove to Hampton he now has a strong ally. When the pack arrived, the Carrera team had excelled, and the pursuit which lasted all day without help from anyone had paid off. The tour had also found itself another name too, Raoul Alcala. It'll be fiesta time in Epinal tonight. So at the end of day six, Leven failed by just 36 seconds to take the yellow jersey from Eric Mackler. And for the moment, the real stars keep their back seat, while Hampston recalls the crash. It happened real fast, but boy, a lot of people went down. When I got up, I was pretty confused just from tumbling around at 30 miles an hour and I couldn't find my bike and 
he was you know, kind of in a panic to get going again. But Davis Finney was right there, so he gave me his bike and shoved me on the way. And then Jeff Bradley brought me halfway up the pack, and Jeff Pierce brought me all the way to the front. Once I got there, I Boyer kind of nursed me all the way in. While Hampson and his 7-Eleven teammates were working to survive crashes, the Carrera boys were loose and happy to have one of their own, Eric Mackler, with the yellow jersey. But what does their star, Stephen Roach, think about having the lead this early in the tour? I mean, it will by far, but I'm, I'm not the boss. <laughs> but you'd unload it if you could? Oh, definitely. Uh, without, uh, not, not so much to, to unload it, but it's because a lot of other teams are just sitting in the wheels doing nothing, and they will ride to the mountains like this in an 